Will you just say a few things? Uh, uh, the best thing is it's uh, connected uh, to the wireless microphone. Okay, okay, what do you want me to log on to here? Oh, let's to check this out. Uh, YouTube.com slash user slash <laughs> And you can have your trailer playing when people are walking in. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> Says I see you guys. Hi, what's happening? <laughs> okay, you see this. <clears throat> All right, well, well it's going to be How do I do this? Uh, 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 
Turn the Matrox on, so it's fired up now. It's flashing away. This mic is on. It's, 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 it's recording, just so we don't forget it. Okay. Okay. Good thing, like, This is pointing the point I think he's going to switch to the awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you start talking, are you going to switch to the slideshow? Yes, I'm going to end the call, the uh, video call, and then I switch to the. Uh, yeah, he will. He will switch that feed to the computer projector. And then we can people just hear his. My voice and the and slides. Just like. Oh, and then down here, we're, this little box down here is now recording. This is recording the HDMI output in a high def. It's about thousand. This is a high def recording. It also has the ability to stream directly if you have URLs that you want to stream to. Wow. So it can record and stream simultaneously. You can also control it from the internet. What do you mean record and stream? There's a chip. There's a chip. Uh -huh. on it. So it's recording to a chip. Yeah, and then streams from where to wherever. Wherever you can name multiple URLs, and you can have profiles in there. So okay, on this day I'm going here. On this day I'm going there. So we just got this one on Wednesday. Wow. So, I so you know, when he does this thing, he has all these transitions, and you can't really capture that too well. But so now when he graduates, who's going to know how to do this? Do you know? You, you know. Is that your baby? I just bought that, but yeah, we just we just got it working the other day. I was there till like 8.30, too. That is so cool. Well, he's going to apply for that uh, indigenous crops. Where is that? It's in the park. It's some sort of the thing that they, you know they you know to address the uh, 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 post culture. Oh yeah, it's like a serious college yeah, 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 yeah. and we got this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. one in Phoenix from the BBL. Yes, that's right. So this is the indigenous yes, so from Hawaiian studies. Yeah. So mm -hmm. working on the Hawaiian Yeah, we have yeah, there you go. Oh, that's for the this is for post post defense questions. <laughs> Okay. 
So any um, requests that people, what you want me to do? Just shoot any people too? Yeah. Yeah. Or just shoot me. Like back. Like back. Okay, I will take now, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't take. You can't take pictures. <laughs> During the lecture, so yeah. testing is it working? Yeah, uh, microphone is working. On YouTube, he has a trail of this. 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 He has Okay. Working now? No picture? <laughs> oh well. Well, maybe it'll get it'll it'll feel better later. Okay. Well, uh, I want to welcome everybody uh, in in the real world, in the virtual world. If, if you can't uh, if you can't see them out there in outer space, well, you can probably hear them. Anyway, I want to welcome everybody to the um, PhD defense of uh, Orville C. Baldos, Peely grass seed dormancy, smoke stimulated germination, and harvest timing. Um, Orville uh, started his academic career in 2002 with a graduation from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Came to UH in 2005 and did a, a weed control in native plants for establishment on the roadways. He finished in 2009. So between 2009 and today, he's been working on his uh, PhD dissertation, and it's part of a larger project to look at uh, producing native Hawaiian plants on the roadways. We have a, a Department of Transportation project whereby we uh, have funding to look at producing native Hawaiian seeds on the roadways so that the roadways become a productive area for um, native, native Hawaiian seeds and then those seeds can be used in wider conservation projects. <coughs> Orville's going to give a, uh, his presentation today and just to give you some idea of the kind of effort that went into this. Uh, he, you, you're going to see a lot on seed germination, seed storage, and he handled just about 76,000 individual seeds for his um, for his project. So even though um, it's a little bit on the low tech side, it's all seed germination and so forth, it's it's high density quality information. So just imagine handling 76,000 seeds over the last four years, you get an idea of the uh, level of dedication and um, detail that's going you're going to view today. So without any further ado, I'll introduce uh, Orville C. Baldos and Orville, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today I'll be discussing the results of my dissertation research on peely grass, seed dormancy, smoke stimulated germination, and harvest time. So in Hawaii, there has been recent interest in uh, the use of native plants in a number of purposes such as restoration, urban landscaping, and roadside revegetation. While a number of plants have been identified and evaluated for these purposes, there are studies are needed on seed production and germination biology in order to increase availability of planting materials as well as to develop large scale establishment protocols. So Pili grass is one native Hawaiian species that is being expanded for use in, in, in different purposes. And Pili grass is a drought tolerant native perennial bunch grass in Hawaii. It is found on all main islands from the coast up to 700 meters above sea level. Peely grass is considered as an important revegetation species in Hawaii because it is, it is adaptable to low rainfall and low nutrient soils, and it has cultural and ecological value. In fact, 
the native Hawaiians have used pili grass as their attaching material for their halis or their, their traditional huts. So in recent years, it has been expanded from restoration to water efficient landscaping, stream back stabilization, and buffer strip plantings. So what critical factors limit the use or availability of pili grass seed? Three come into mind. One is seed harvest timing. Second would be seed dormancy. And third would be seed storage. So these three themes, uh, so let's go to the harvest timing first. Um, harvest timing is important for pili grass because there hasn't been any protocols developed for pili grass yet. Timely harvest is essential because if you harvest too early, you have more immature seed, while if you harvest too late, you lose seeds from shattering. Seed dormancy is another critical limitation since you can't use freshly harvested seeds, they're dormant. And this could be a problem in a revegetation sense because it can delay canopy fill-in and making your plantings more prone to erosion and weed invasion. Seed storage is another critical aspect. Uh, knowing the right storage conditions is essential for preserving seed viability. And it also builds a critical mass of seeds for large-scale projects. And it also stabilizes the supply of seeds by buffering it. So these are the three themes of the dissertation. So this is a photograph of my, like, if I was to think about a shot of uh, my dissertation in one photograph, this is how I would visualize it. So let's go to harvest timing first. What harvest timing indicators can be used for pili grass? A number of crop and non-crop species have used growing degree days or growing degree units as a means to predict harvest timing. Growing degree units considers temperature and heat units accumulated over time and relates it to seed development and maturity. GDUs can be calculated by uh, measuring the maximum and minimum temperature for a specific day. And uh, you take the average temperature and subtract it with a base temp. A base temperature is the base temperature is uh, at the temperature at which growth stops. For pili grass, it's about 15 degrees Celsius. So if the maximum and minimum temperature at one point in time or during one day is 15 degrees Celsius, you have a CGDU of uh, a GDU of zero. So to make growing degree units a meaningful uh, measurement for harvest timing, we relate it with spike and seed development. So for the harvest timing study, I collected spike and seed data and related it to average cumulative growing degree units across seasons. So this is how I did the experiment. So I harvested 40 stems per row in my PD grass field, separated 30 stems or comps, collected seed yield for that 30. The remaining 10 comps were used for calculating the total spike per comp. And the total spike per comb were separated into number of intact, number of shed, and number of unopened spikes. The number of intact and shed spikes were then bulked to collect a sample of 10 spikes and measure moisture, comp or moisture content of the, the spikes. Once the samples were dried, I collected the seeds, measured their dry weight, collected their number of seeds, and then separated it into filled seeds and empty seeds. In addition to that, I also calculated the average dry weight of seeds, and this is your measure of physiological maturity. Physiological maturity is defined as the maximum um, weight that a seed can uh, carry. So the data collection, uh, I, I, I had two seasons during the year. And I have a spring season and a fall season. So for the spring season, I cut the PD grass stands during the spring equinox, waited for 57 to 59 days to start harvest. And harvesting and or data collection continued on until the end of the summer solstice, where I cut the PD grass again, PD grass stand. The fall growing season was similar. So I cut the PD grass stand on September 22nd or 23rd, waited for 57 to 59 days, started harvesting, 
collected data until the end of the winter solstice. During the period between the first cut and the second, or the, or the last cut, I collected, I recorded the maximum and minimum temperatures every day and calculated the cumulative growing degree units. So the data was, uh, I, I, I collected data from 2011 to 2012. Uh, I did analysis of variance and regression analysis on the data. And this is just a short video of how I did the experiment. So I have my rows of peely grass here, and I collected about 30 counts, or 40 actually, 40 stems. Separated it into 30 and 10 stems. Look at that, so I'm counting per row. And for the 10 spikes, I separated the spikes into number of intact, or for the number of intact, number of uh, shed seeds, and number of unopened. Spikes, actually spikes, not seeds. So results of the harvest timing indicates that growing degree units can be used as an estimate to, for harvest timing. It was consistent in three of the four cropping cycles and was observed in a number of data that I collected, including seed yield for 30 comps, field seed number of 10 spikes, total weight and number of seeds, and average weight of individual seeds. So the optimum CGDU was between 768 and 778, which is equivalent to 79 to 82 days after cutting. Uh, this range of CGDU coincided with uh, spike moisture content range, which is 0.68 to 0.72 grams of water per dry weight. So this is one example here. So you have um, seed yield of 30 pounds, and you have spike water on this side. So this is the peak seed yield for the three consecutive, consecutive cropping seasons. So if you draw a line with the same like GDU, you have a similar range of spike moisture content across the season at this point. In addition to the um, quantitative data that I collected, uh, visual uh, seed head tangling also corresponded as uh, uh, with the seed maturity data. So seed, seed if you don't, if, uh, if you, if you don't collect the, I guess your, your moisture content, if you, have, you don't have a means to record your moisture content, then you can just look at the field and see if it's uh, ready. So the tangling is actually a good means of measuring maturity. So here is the PD grass field, uh, successive photos during my harvest period. So you can see the spike development over time. Here it's dark brown and it's turning light brown as it begins to tangle. And in this set of photos, the maximum or the intent, the most intense tangling was observed at 755 cumulative growing degree units or 0.75 grams of water per dry weight, which is close to the predicted value. In addition to finding an optimum amount of um, seeds or a, a, a harvest index, we also observed a decline in the PD grass productivity over time. This was observed in data like seed yield from 30 comps and total spike per comp. So let's look at seed yield per comp for, for 30 comps. So this is grams of seed, cumulative growing degree days, you have your spring 2011 season here, fall 2011, spring 2012, and fall 2012. So as you increase your cropping cycles, you can see a decline in the productivity of your peely grass stand. So this is total spike number per comp. So y-axis is the total number of spike per comp. This is your cumulative growing degree units. You'll also see a decline over successive uh, cropping seasons, you, you can see that fall is flat. So a number of factors can be uh, caused by, 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 by uh, the, the, the decrease in productivity can be caused by a number of factors, including stand age, cutting height, thatch accumulation, and increased pest incidence. Uh, further studies are recommended to uh, tease out the effects of these uh, factors. So now let's focus on the seed dormancy aspect. So 
as you can recall, freshly harvested seeds so of PD grass is uh, dormant and it will not germinate. PD grass seeds, according to Baskin and Baskin, possess a physiological dormancy. Physiological dormancy is the most abundant form of dormancy in seed bearing plants, and it's classified into three levels. You have deep, intermediate, and non deep. PD grass likely possesses non deep dormancy since it is responsive to GA or gibberellic acid application and warm and dry storage. So, for this dissertation, I wanted to look more in depth and uh, wanted to understand more about the mechanisms behind the dormancy of PD grass seeds. So, I looked at the components of non deep physiological dormancy in PD grass. So, this is a PD grass seed, a cross section of it. You have an embryo imposed dormancy, which is physiological, and a coat imposed dormancy, which is physical. Coat imposed dormancy is caused by uh, physical uh, restriction by the embryo, uh, by, by the endosperm. So the endosperm is basically restricting embryo growth and radical protrusion. Coat imposed dormancy can be overcome by increasing embryo growth potential or promoting endosperm weakening. Gibberellic acid plays a role in relief of coat imposed dormancy because studies have shown that uh, applications of gibberellic acid increases embryo growth potential and promotes endosperm weakening. So for this part of the dissertation, I wanted to examine the role of coats. So what I did was I scarified the, the seeds to mimic endosperm weakening. So here are my treatments. So the scarification study was done in March and in June, harvested seeds. So I have five treatments. So my intact seeds would serve as my control treatment. I had naked periopsis, top cut seeds, and spear cut seeds. Uh, these did not expose the embryo, but uh, it increased water uptake. And I have the spear side nick seeds where I expose the embryo, which uh, mimics artificial endosperm weakening. So for this one, I cut it on the on side. This one, I cut the spear side off. And this one, I sliced the seed diagonally to expose the embryo. So results of the scarification study. As you can see here, the spear side nick seeds, which expose the embryo, exhibited consistent germination across the seed batches. The naked caryopsis and top cut seeds exhibited germination in the March 2012 seeds, but did not exhibit germination. So it was not consistent for these treatments. Spear cut seeds did nothing to the uh, eating grass. So percent germination of spear side seeds were consistent. And uh, percent germination was 30% and 19.5%. This confirms the presence of coat imposed dormancy in PD grass and may suggest the role of GA in endosperm weakening. Uh, this result also suggests the uh, presence of physiological dormancy because I didn't, uh, germination was not as high as my tetrazolium viability test. Because the tetrazolium viability test is a test wherein you measure, it, it's a chemical test wherein you measure how much germinable seed is, is uh, how much a seed batch is germinable. So if you scarify your seeds, you only have 30 to 19.5%. So there must be something else that's uh, controlling the dormancy. And that is actually the physiological uh, component. So in addition to uh, confirming the presence of the coat and finding that there's physiological dormancy involved. I also observe seasonality in the depth of germination, where in the March harvested seeds were less dormant than the June harvested seeds. So I did chi-square test of the treatments. So I compared March versus June. So I had 33 seeds germinated versus June. And this was significant. So in general, you can see that there's much more germination happening in the March than in the June harvested seeds. Now let's go to embryo imposed dormancy. So I was interested in looking at the factors affecting dormancy relief in PD grass. And this can be divided into two. One would be chemical factors, which is within the seed or within the environment. The other one would be physical factors 
brought about by environmental uh, factors. Examples of chemical factors that affect dormancy relief are the ones within the seed, which is gibberellic acid and abscisic acid. And you have smoke fumes, which is from the environment. Examples of physical factors are temperature and relative humidity. So let's look at the physical factors first. Uh, temperature, relative humidity. So in peely grass, uh, a number of studies have shown that peely grass requires a dry storage requirement or dry after ripening period. And they recommend this, these studies recommend storage under dry conditions for 6 to 12 months. However, these studies didn't look at specific temperature and relative humidity and how that affects dormancy loss. So for my study, I looked at season, effect of season, effect of relative humidity, temperature, and storage duration on dormancy loss of PD grass. So this is how I did the experiment. First, I collected clean seed, placed them in unsealed packets. So each experiment contained about 252 packets. These packets were then placed inside desiccators containing saturated salt solutions. Uh, these saturated salt solutions uh, under room temperature produces different relative humidities. So lithium fluoride produced 12% relative humidity. Calcium nitrate produced 50% relative humidity. And sodium chloride produced 75% relative humidity. So the seeds were stored under these relative humidity conditions for 28 days. And these are the equivalent seed moisture content. So they adjusted, uh, the, the relative humidity adjusted the seed moisture content to 6%, 11%, and 14%. So after equilibration, I sealed the packets to maintain seed moisture content. So now I have the three different, uh, the seeds with the different relative moist, uh, moisture contents. So I stored them in three different temperature regimes. 10 would be under refrigerated conditions, 20 is your ambient laboratory condition, and 30 is uh, another incubated condition. So aside from, so we stored uh, these different moisture contents at different temperatures over different periods in time, so from 0 to 12 months. After each uh, incubation duration, I collected seed germination tests to determine dormancy loss over time, that resulting viability tests to determine seed deterioration over time, and uh, seed moisture content just to make sure if the packets did their job. So this experiment was conducted twice using March and October 2011 harvested seeds. So here are the results. Let's focus on seed germination first. So we have the equilibrium relative humidity on this column. So we have 12, 50, 75, 12, 75. Temperature, increasing temperature as you go down the column. And you have months in storage, 0 to 12. So let's look at the seeds that were stored at 10 degrees Celsius first. So you'll notice here the percent germination of seeds were low, less than 3%. So this indicates that storage at 10 degrees Celsius, regardless of relative humidity, maintained dormancy of PD grass over the 12-month storage period. So now let's look at the storage at 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. So the first thing that pops here is the germination in the month three of March harvested seeds. You have germination going on here. Whereas in here, there's very little germination going on. So this suggests that this March harvested seed batch is less dormant than the October harvested seed. And then lastly, let's look at the uh, storage uh, from 6 months to 12 months. So you'll notice that cells are shaded green. So the greener the shading, the more germination you have. So Based on this uh, data over here, we can see that the optimum dormancy loss conditions were storage at 12% 12 12 relative humidity, 
at 30 degrees Celsius or at 50% relative humidity at 30 degrees Celsius. So let's look at the tetrazoleum test results. Similar structure of the table, except I don't have month zero for this one. So the main thing to look at here is the red shading. So the red shading, the, the deeper the red shading is, the more C deterioration you have. So looking at these two tables, the uh, consistent, the treatment combinations which exhibited consistent deterioration over time were the ones that were stored at the highest uh, relative humidity at 75% relative humidity and at, uh, and at 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. So to summarize, storage at 10 degrees Celsius maintained dormancy and viability for up to a year. There was an observed seasonality in March seeds uh, in, 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 in dormancy, wherein you have your March seeds having less dormancy than October harvested seeds. Oops. <laughs> the optimum storage conditions for dormancy loss was 12% uh, relative humidity, which is equal to 6% seed moisture at 30 degrees Celsius at 12 months, or 50% relative humidity, 11% seed moisture at 30 degrees for 9 months. The tetrazoleum viability test indicated that seed deterioration was observed in the uh, treatments that were stored in the high relative humidity treatments and at 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. Let's go back to the factors affecting dormancy relief. So we have now answered the physical factors. Now let's focus on the chemical factors. So chemical factors involves uh, plant hormones within the seed and smoke cues. So I did studies on plant hormones. And what I found out that uh, if you increase the GA levels um, of the seeds above ABA levels, you have germination. So now let's focus on smoke cues, which is uh, effects of carotenolide and cyanide. A smoke picture. <laughs> So fires provide a recruitment opportunity for plants. They change the growing environment by altering the soil, increasing light availability, reducing allelochemicals, and removing plant competition. So fires uh, provide a suitable place for plant recol recolonization because it creates a bare ground uh, area. So in addition to physical changes in the environment, Fires also produce chemical compounds which plants utilize for cues as germination. So burning vegetation produces tar and char, particulates and condensates, which are deposited into the soil. These materials are then uh, released a number of known germination stimulants called carotenes, cyanide, nitrate, and nitrite. So these compounds uh, stimulates germination in a number of species. PD grass is reported as a fire adapted species. However, studies on smoke stimulated germination have been limited. The only study that I found was uh, Campbell's uh, dissertation with PD grass and he reported uh, germination stimulation with aerosol smoke. So aerosol smoke is basically he's just burning the, the plant material and piping the smoke through the seed. So in this dissertation, I wanted to understand smoke stimulation more. And um, I also wanted to develop a smoke-based seed treatment, which can be an alternative to gibberellic acid. So studies on smoke-stimulated germination, I tested different smoke water solutions and the smoke-derived compounds. So for the smoke water solutions, I had PD grass smoke water, xylo smoke water, and food grade liquid smoke. Food grade liquid smoke was included in the study because it is commercially available. So you can just buy out of the store and use it for your germination. Xylose was included because it didn't contain any nitrogenous compounds. For the smoke derived compounds, I tested carotenolide and cyanide. So carotenolide was recently identified. So it was identified by indiv uh, independent uh, groups, one from Australia, Dr. Trimati's work, and uh, one from uh, South Africa in 2004. And cyanide was just published 
a uh, couple years back. So cyanide was was also identified as one of the uh, components in smokeless vinyl extermination in plants. So what I did for my study was I did dose rate studies first on, on these compounds, try to determine the maximum amount of uh, material for maximum germination. And once I found the dose rate studies, uh, once I found the optimum concentration, then I did some germination studies comparing smoke and the two active compounds. So for the smoke water studies, or for, for the dose rate studies, I uh, they, I, I did germination tests on March 2011 seeds, and for the smoke versus active compound study, I used July 2012 seeds. So here's a short video of how I did the smoke solution. So I preheated my flask in a, with an open flame, and then piped uh, 30 milliliters of air per minute into that flask. And once the flask has been preheated, I added 2.5 grams of material, either pinny grass or xylos. So you can see that it burst into flames. And uh, now it starts producing smoke, so I quickly closed it. And then the smoke was piped into uh, 100 milliliters of distilled water in an Erlenmeyer flask. So results of the smoke stimulated germination indicated that, um, that this is for the dose rate studies. Uh, for PD grass smoke water, you don't need any dilution at all. Uh, xylose also didn't need any dilution. Uh, for food grade liquid smoke, you need to dilute it to 1% by volume. And for carotenolide, I tested concentrations between 0 0.0067 to 0 .67, uh, 66.7 micromolars, but didn't see any response in carotenoid. Uh, see any response after the APD grass. So uh, this may indicate that KAR1 is not the compound responsible for smoke-stimulated germination in PD grass. And then I tested cyanide with potassium cyanide as my source and found stimulation, significant stimulation between 50 and 500 micromolars. So now that I've optimized, or that I found the optimum dilutions, I did a study comparing the smoke water versus the 500 micromolars of cyanide in July 2012 seeds. So here is my data. So I have percent germination on the y-axis. And here, 1 and 2 corresponds to runs 1 and 2, because I, I repeated the experiment. and. Uh, they were separate because there was a significant run interaction. So we have distilled water, 500 micromoles potassium cyanide, food grade liquid smoke, PD gas. Neat means it was undiluted. Neat, and neat xylos also. So what you'll notice here is that the PD gas smoke water and food grade liquid smoke was similar in terms of germination stimulation with 500 micromoles of potassium cyanide. Zylo smoke water did not stimulate the seeds in this seed batch, but in the previous batch, the March 2011 seeds, had significant stimulation. And this may indicate some sort of seasonality going on with, 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 the, with the smoke response. I did a follow-up study curious about like how much cyanide is the PD grass water containing. So I tested it, and it turned out positive uh, about 100 micromolars of cyanide. So within that concentration, that stimulatory too. I tested xylo smoke water and food grade liquid smoke water, and they didn't contain cyanide because uh, people will <laughs> people will probably <laughs> complain or something. So aside from that, uh, so the the germination response that we found in the xylos and food grade liquid smoke may suggest that there are other non cyanogenic compounds that promote seed germination in PD grass. So in conclusion, harvest timing can, in, uh, in the harvest timing study, we admit, we, we've identified the range of cumulative growing degree day units for optimum harvesting. We can use spike moisture content for monitoring our optimum, to, like when to harvest our seeds. 
And if you don't have uh, a means to measure moisture content, you can just use seed head tangling. So this is how the seed heads would look like if it's tangled already. In addition to finding the optimum uh, um, seed harvest timing, successive cropping reduces crop yield. There was an observed decline in the PD grass stand over time. The results of the scarification study confirms the role of coats and suggests the role of gibberellic acid in endosperm weakening. And uh, there's also an indication that physiological dormancy is going on. Uh, there was also an observed seasonality wherein the March harvested seeds were less dormant than the June harvested seeds. For the optimum dormancy loss condition study, uh, seed viability was maintained for up to a year with storage at 10 degrees Celsius, regardless of relative humidity. The seasonality, there was a seasonality effect. We saw that March harvested seeds again were less dormant than October. The optimum storage conditions were storage at 12% relative humidity, 6% seed moisture at 13 degrees Celsius for 12 months, or 50% relative humidity, uh, or 11% seed moisture at 30 degrees Celsius for nine months. The tetrazolium test indicated that viability loss uh, was observed in uh, the high relative humidity treatments, which were stored between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. So lastly, for the smoke stimulated germination, cyanide was confirmed as one of the stimulants in smoke. And pili grass smoke contained approximately 100 micromolars of cyanide. I tested KAR1, uh, carotinolide, which was uh, another compound that was recently isolated in smoke and didn't sti uh, stimulate PD graph, so that's not the compound responsible. And the germination that was observed in the smoke solutions without cyanide indicates that there are non cyanogenic compounds that exert an effect on PD graphs. So, practical applications of disserta this dissertation. So, for seed production, you can use CGBU, spike moisture, and seed head timing as your uh, harvest indicators for timing your harvest. Should aim for harvesting in March, so, so as to minimize your depth of dormancy. So uh, it's, it's shorter in that high temperature storage treatment. So to lose dormancy, you should uh, store your seeds at 6% moisture at 30 degrees Celsius for 9 to 12 months. And then after you lose your dormancy, you should store your seeds at cool temperatures between 5 to 10 degrees Celsius to maintain viability. Uh, for field establishment, we found that smoke water can enhance seed germination. We can apply smoke water by pre-soaking the seeds or spraying or applying it as a hydromulch additive. So aside from the pra practical applications that were found out in these, this, this dissertation, there are also ecological implications. So the results of the study can explain why PD grass is found in, in, in certain areas. And it also explains some eco the ecophysiology of PD grass. So the hot, dry areas where PD grass is usually found is conducive for dormancy loss. So here's a map of the state of Hawaii. So the, the, the areas where in PD grass is found is usually on these red areas where you have very dry and hot conditions. So the dry leeward sides uh, where PD grass is found experiences a distinct wet and dry period. And this distinct periods provide an annual cycle of seed production and dormancy loss. So we have, during the wet season, you have plant growth and seed set of PD grass. After the wet season, you have the dry season, which is conducive for dormancy loss. And once the dry season is over, then you have wet season, the wet season coming in, and your seeds are, have lost dormancy, and you have germination. In addition to that, um, the smoke-stimulated germination studies uh, indicate that PD grass expose, uh, exploits fire for persistence and dominance. So fires create a bare ground area wherein you have good growing conditions. You exclude competition, increase nutrient availability. And what PD grass does is it utilizes the smoke cues for increasing seedling establishment or recruitment. 
So in other studies, uh, other studies have found the stimulatory effects of uh, fires in tea grass tanks. Uh, this study by Campbell indicated that you can rejuvenate tea grass with uh, burning. And here in Hawaii, there has been historical accounts that uh, the native Hawaiians burned tea grasslands to stimulate new growth, which they use for thatching. So I'd like to thank a number of people. Because <laughs> um, this dissertation isn't possible without the help of uh, a, a huge number of people. So I'd like to thank my advisor, Dr. Joe DeFrank, for providing the technology for, for everything, for, for, for streaming this dissertation. Actually, the, 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 without him, it, the, the streaming thing is not possible. Uh, Dr. Friday for um, suggesting smoke when I was still starting out in my dissertation, trying to find some interesting studies to include. Uh, Dr. Baylor for the scarification study. Uh, uh, Dr. Kobayashi and Dr. Paul for providing equipment and chemicals. I'd like to thank Dr. Tessie Amore and Peter Tobias also, since uh, they were the ones who, when, when I didn't have enough funding, <laughs> they were the ones who uh, took care of me. And they were also helpful, very, they were very helpful in terms of providing lab space and equipment for, for my research. Uh, the people from Magoon Research Facility, Craig, Neil, and uh, Ronald, uh, for my field studies, they were very helpful for, uh, like, if I needed planting, uh, they're there to help me plant my PD grass. Uh, Dr. Gavin Flamati of the University of Western Australia, he was very helpful since he gave me samples of KAR1 to test. To test. Uh, Scott Lucas and Kai Omeda, uh, who was a visiting uh, faculty at, in, at, in our lab. Uh, Scott was very helpful in my field studies and very helpful also in, 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 in setting up all of the equipment for, for this uh, uh, video uh, recording session. Uh, Dr. Matthew Kramer and Dr. Gong Mei Li for statistical advice. Uh, Dr. Gong Mei Li was um, my, uh, I, I, I asked for help uh, earlier on. And then uh, when I met Dr. Kramer, uh, Dr. Kramer was very helpful in, in my stats. Uh, the Sustainable Organic Farming Systems Lab and the Tropical Forestry and Agroforestry Agro Lab for lending their uh, weighing scales, because I didn't have weighing scales at that time you know, when I was, when I was uh, measuring my, my uh, seed moisture content. Uh, the chain lab in the chemistry department where I got samples of benzaldehyde and uh, had the benzaldehyde clean for my uh, termination test. Uh, Chester and Wesley Yoshida. Uh, Chester was, uh, is another PhD student and, um, in chemistry, and I, 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 I had several, um, I guess, meetings with him like in, in terms of uh, suggestions on how to do stuff in terms of chemistry. Uh, people from the NRCS Plant Material Center, there's Gwen, Gwen Sakamoto, David Dubashel, uh, Kenny Reyes, Andres Warrior, and Robert Joy, who's already retired. Um, these guys um, gave me the planting material, so we collected the seeds using a combine for uh, for my study because I needed a lot of seeds for this uh, dissertation. Uh, Chris Dacus was also very uh, influential because he was the guy in uh, HDOT who started all of these uh, native plant research in Hawaii. Uh, Dr. Russell Yost for some statistical advice also, and uh, Susan Shirley and Jeff for the clerical support. Hawaii and Martha for uh, uh, the stats, <laughs> like giving me, like, because I was always, um, I was always, uh, I guess, ranting or, uh, uh, so, uh, I had statistical problems, so I had to, like, just, just, just to blow steam off, I guess. <laughs> uh, Dr. Bingham for uh, preliminary consultations with, with the smoke study. Uh, Lori for the support. Uh, colleagues, friends, and family, thank you. Mahalo and salamat. So this dissertation used about 76,600 C. So if you have any questions, thank you.
So have you rejuvenated the uh, ingress plot at Magoon with the uh, smoke yet? Not yet. And how would you do it? Well, I can do control burning, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I was if you could burn it or if you would spray on your smoke smoke. Well, because um, one, one factor that may be implicated or one, one probable cost might be uh, the accumulation of thatch. So I need to remove the thatch layer. So it's not only the smoke application that might that that can help. I, I need to remove some stuff there that might um, inhibit growth. And the fish will also smell like they often treat uh, the seed with potassium uh, nitrate solution to uh, stimulate germination. Did you do any potassium nitrate uh, contamination of your seed? At this point, no. Um, I was just uh, focused on the KAR and the uh, cyanide. Why do you select smoke over heat itself as, as your... Well, I did um, studies, I did preliminary studies with heating, but I didn't get any, um, any response at all. So, if you want to make, I guess you just follow the procedure and just have it on a large scale, like 2.5, and then and then scale it up. Or uh, there is actually available, commercially available smoke solutions that you buy. You can buy a gallon because uh, there's one company in Australia. It's called Regen, so you can buy it commercially also if you don't want to make your own. Any more questions? Okay, if there's no more questions. And uh, we'll have the committee reconvene in about five minutes. Thank you very much. Thanks. And this ends the live broadcast of my dissertation. So thank you for watching, people. Bye.